World War II was one of the most tragic events in human history. It plucked millions of ordinary American men out of their communities, trained them for the world, hurled them into a strange reality of combat thousands of miles from home. Millions of young Americans fought, they suffered, they spilled their blood around the globe, struggling daily just to stay alive and in the midst of violence and chaos and fear. These gentlemen, sitting in these front rows, know what I'm talking about. Indeed, it can be accounted among the most destructive global episodes in human history. More than 50 million people died of war-related deaths. It wounded hundreds of millions more, left major cities in Europe and parts of Asia in charred ruins, displaced millions to refugee camps, and with the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, ushered in the nuclear age. Although the United States was spared the destruction of its cities and the killing of its women and children, the conflict still cost the nation some 400,000 young lives. At the memorial yesterday, we sat in awe at the stars representing each and every one of those. 600,000 more returned to American shores wearing the coveted Purple Heart. Countless others suffered unseen injuries which doomed them to relieving the horrors of war over and over again. Nearly every American family grieved over the loss of the debilitation of a son, a brother, a loved one, or a friend. Of the 300,000 Kentuckians who put their uniforms on and marched off to war, 7,900 died in the armed services. Another 5,100 of those were killed in action. Such statistics are overwhelming enough, but help little in understanding the depths and the suffering wrought by war, folks. Oliver Wendell Holmes said, we have shared the incommunicable experience of war. In our youth, our hearts were touched by fire. Those that have not been in combat can never fully understand this uncommunicable experience. We are, as a nation, in debt to those that endured the Great Depression, won World War II, and created and sustained a post-war era of great economic growth. This extraordinary war experiences ought to be shared and preserved for prosperity you see, they have earned our nation's gratitude and a space in our collective memory for all time. Veterans, please, and I know how reluctant you are to speak of it, but please keep telling those stories. The youth of today, the young soldiers of today, need to know where their legacy came from. One of the reasons I look so forward to honor flight is because of those old warriors. I love to hear your stories. I love to share your grief. I love to see your tears. And I love to feel your love. You see, folks, what sticks in my mind the most today is I think back to my own combat experiences. In those triple canopy jungles and rice paddies of Vietnam, it's not so much the pain terror and the sorrow of war, although I can tell you I remember that well enough. But what I remember most, what I choose to remember, is the honor, the honor that I had in defending this great nation and serving in the company of men just like you. Today the guns are silent, a great tragedy has ended, a great victory has been won, the skies no longer rain death, the seas bear only commerce, and everywhere we walk upright 
in the sunlight, the entire world is quietly at peace. And that is because of you.